Ay, sorry, nakamute pala. <laughs> sorry, sorry, nakamute pala. So, um, ang pag-uusapan natin today, episode 9 of RCC Show. Sorry, nakamute. Um, we're gonna have job hunting tips plus live interview with our special guest, Junius Season. Okay, so he's a senior recruitment specialist and he's going to share uh, nga, job hunting tips para dun sa mga fresh graduates, beginners, or even uh, seniors na naghahanap ng trabaho. And we're also going to hear his inspiring story. Okay, so before I put him on on on, on the stream right now, uh, introduce ko lang si Brother Junius. Okay, <clears throat> wait lang. Wala yung ano ko. Okay, wait lang. Wala. Anyway, so, um, wala pong sound. Nakamute. Pero okay na, Del. We're good na. Naririnig nyo na yung sound. We're good now? Good, good. Hey, so, um, <clears throat> I can't hear anything. Okay, wait lang. Right. Right. So I'm going to introduce na with uh brother um Junos. Yeah. Yo, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. How about right. you? So uh um, thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, clear. Good All and right. clear. Good. Kanina pala nakamute ako. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> Pati yung mga viewers natin. So anyway, um, welcome to the CCNA show. So uh, bigyan lang kita ng mm-hmm. brief introduction what we have here. So it's a daily live or daily Facebook live show wherein mm-hmm. we share everything or we talk about everything about CCNA. So siguro naman familiar okay. ka na with CCNA certification about Cisco and hindi lang about mm-hmm. technical topics. Kumbaga, we also talk about katulad ng job hunting tips, mindset, mm-hmm. characters, and anything in between. Baga makakatulong na rin in, in IT career as a whole. Right? Mm-hmm. So, um, right now, what we are going to talk about is uh, we're gonna throw you in some questions and then from the viewers then, uh, they're gonna ask some questions tapos, ayun, um, pagtulungan natin, tulungan na sagutan yung mga tanong. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. So, sure. Um, okay. Wait lang. Alisin na muna natin to para hindi maraming nakalagay sa screen. Okay? So, si... Um, sabi ko nga kanina, si Brother Junos is uh, a recruitment specialist. Pero I, I guess it would be much more exciting if we can hear his story directly from him. Okay? So, bro, mm-hmm. can you give us a little bit of background before we go with the formal questions? Uh, a little bit background about what you do or who's Junos right now? I mean... Ano yung current role mo or ano yung mm-hmm. hobbies mo, for example, if you're willing to share some a bit of yourself. Sure, sure. It's okay. So um, thank you for uh, inviting me, no, uh, Billy. So uh, uh, it's a pleasure talking to uh, to your uh, audience and to our fellow uh, Filipino uh, aspiring uh, workforce, uh, you know, employees. So. Um, Let's uh, discuss few things about myself now. Uh, I am into technology recruitment for over a decade now. So uh, I started this back in 2010. And um, um, well, I started my career back in 2008. So don't ask me how I was going to So uh, So it only signifies that uh, somehow I'm already uh, seasoned when it comes to to. Uh, recruitment. So uh, ever since uh, I started uh, working, I I've been exposed to recruitment na. So uh, from the BPO sector to ITO to uh, the infra and software side. So I've been exposed to that. So um, currently I am part of a cloud communication uh, company. Uh, is it okay, ba to to name the the company? Sure. Kung okay lang right. sa company <laughs> So um, I'm I am part of uh, Ring Central. So um, in Ring Central, I am a technology recruiting officer. So um, uh, mainly I handle uh, positions uh, heavily focused on the infrastructure side, infrastructure and operations, 
enterprise applications, uh, cloud security, cloud uh, service and operations, and even systems operations. So, um, medyo, medyo overwhelming, pero don't worry, uh, magkaka-connect pa naman sila lahat. So, um, anything, uh, as long as uh, it's uh, related to the technology, uh, it's uh, my business uh, segment or my, my tower, recruitment tower, who's uh, handling that. So, uh, ayun. So, a little bit of myself, um, um, new father ako. So, I, I have a seven-month-old oh, baby. Congrats. So, um, sleepless nights, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, what else? Um, I love uh, cycling. Uh, it's just that due to the, the current uh, situation, yung pandemic natin, uh, I can't go around the the northern area because I'm from up north. So, uh, normal routine ko dyan lang sa, ano, sa, sa northern area. Hindi ko na lang sasabihin. <laughs> Ayun. So, um, what else? Uh, I'm into, uh, uh, before, nung mas bata-bata ako, siguro, uh, I'm into uh, esports. You know, uh, I uh, join mga, uh, mga 5v5 competitions uh, before. And then hanggang sa, alam mo yun, uh, siguro na paglipasan na ng panahon. <laughs> hanggang sa ano, uh, ngayon, uh, family uh, na yung focus natin. So uh, that's, that's it for, for ano, uh, my background. Alright, so thank you for your uh, sharing a little bit about yourself, including uh, mm -hmm. your hobby. And congratulations for being a father. Welcome to the club, bro. So, <laughs> I know marami din tayong mga ka-IT dyan na tatay na and uh, pamilyado na. So, congratulations. Okay, so, kanina, I, I, uh, na-excite ako nung narinig ko yung mga positions na hinahire or hinahandle mo, which is more of uh, related din sa network like cloud security, security mm -hmm. engineer. So, um, I guess marami tayong mga viewers or um, marami tayong colleagues and friends na mm -hmm. um, this, na nagtatrabaho as network or cloud security engineer kasi yun yung mga mm -hmm. uh, ilan sa mga uh, what do you call this in demand positions right now now mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. to kick off our show can, can you give us or um can you share us what is kumbaga ano yung uh, normal recruitment process when it comes on IT okay san sino ba yung nagde-decide ng for example sino ba yung magbababa ng mm -hmm. may hiring pa ng ganito mm -hmm. and then sa na ba ang punta noon? To, tapos pag natanggap nyo ba yung, for example, yung ganong request or ganong order, how mm -hmm. do you deal with it? Uh, I-create na ba kayo ng uh, opening sa job streets or anything or you're gonna search Facebook mm -hmm. or how does the process look like? Alright. So, um, in uh, my uh, over a decade of experience no, sa IT recruitment, somehow, nagpabago-bago siya. Uh, not all companies uh, are, you know, they, they have a uh, you know, a standard uh, practice, or I must say universal uh, practice. Pero um, the one thing that I can see as a common, uh, you know, denominator pagdating sa uh, mga IT vacancies is that um, all of those vacancies, kinukuha yan ng, ano, depende yan sa, sa manpower need for the entire year. So um, if we have a budget, Definitely, they will uh, plot those budgets kung ano yung mga areas na kailangan talaga ng tao sa, sa IT. So, uh, I, I know that uh, all of the positions somehow um, dito sa IT, uh, it's it's vital, you know. Uh, as we all know, sa bawat companies naman, um, we have IT. And uh, I believe that uh, sa 21st century, siguro lahat ng companies meron ng mga infra, meron ng software side. So, definitely they a lot budget there so from the time that they already have a budget the si hiring manager will uh, talk to uh, recruitment they will uh, tell the recruiting uh, officer or kung sino man yung manager na we need a person uh, let's say a network engineer and then um ipababa nila yung job specifics so when we say job specifics at yung uh, job description Ano yung minimum qualifications natin sa network engineer kung kailangan ba ng certification. And then from there, 
uh, we will standardize na kung ano yung maging recruitment processes natin. So, um, after ba namin makuha yung resume, kailangan ba namin uh, kausapin kagad si candidate or gusto mo ma-review muna yung CV bago namin siya kausapin yung candidate or gusto mo ba um, magkaroon pa tayo ng technical exam to validate kung ano yung sinasabi nila sa resume para mas uh, malaman natin if um, their uh, their uh, claim is uh, true enough. And then uh, apart from that, um, may series of interviews yan sa side naman ng hiring uh, team. So meron papasok dyan yung peer interview natin, meron papasok dyan na uh, local hiring manager natin. Now if it's a multicultural company, um, papasok dyan sila uh, hiring manager sa US or kung saan mang region yung, ano, yung isosupport mo. And then um, if uh, you're into a senior level position or yung mga, let's say, mga senior manager or associate director level, that's the time na papasok na magkakausapin mo sila VP ng company. And then uh, if everything goes well, nais mo lahat yun, that's the time that we will discuss the job offer. All right. So um, I'm not sure kung nagtitake note kayo guys, but... Uh, mm-hmm. What Brother Junius shared to us right now is a golden nugget if you're looking for a job. Okay, so we know, kumbaga, from what he said, nagkakaroon tayo ng idea kung paano ba nangyayari na pagpasa natin ng resume sa isang, kumbaga, vacant position, kung ano-ano yung nangyayari behind the scenes. Kasi tayong mga applicant, for example, hindi naman natin nakikita na yan, eh, di ba? So sila na yung nag-uusap mm-hmm. in the back end. Now, nagkakaroon tayo ng idea with this conversation dun sa mga sinishare niya kung ano yung nangyayari. Now, nabagit mo kanina, bro, um, mm-hmm. it's, uh, kumbaga, it, it, there is a, uh, what do you call this? May, may mga pagkakataon na nagpapa-exam kayo if needed o kaya naman, mm-hmm. uh, uh, ini-screen nyo talaga yung applicants. Well, um, mm-hmm. Kailangan ba yung mga requirements na, for example, na nilatag nung, nung hiring manager, mm-hmm. for example, kailangan pa ma-meet lahat, nung, for example, mm-hmm. ng candidate na like. Okay. Well, there are uh, hiring managers na parang kung anong nandun dun sa may job description nila, yun yung parang Bible na susundan mo, yung checklist mo talaga. But um, in my uh, well, in my experience uh, normally, I only ask for the top three uh, core skill set sa isang position. Kasi um, normally, I discuss to my hiring managers na we cannot get all of those uh, skill set in one person lang. Kasi uh, definitely ang um, job description, kung ano yung tingin mo na ideal eh, ano yung perfect candidate para sa'yo, ilalagay mo dyan eh, di ba? So uh, what, we, what we do, at least sa, sa, sa team namin, uh, and I, I firmly believe na um, this has been uh, the practice of other recruiters then, you know, we look for the top three non-negotiable uh, skill set, right? So, ano talaga yung kailangan ng doon? Kasi, uh, eto yung magiging core function niya kapag ka naging, let's say, naging developer siya, naging engineer siya, yun talaga yung gagawin niya every day. Now, apart from that, um, kasi meron, nahabol at nahabol yan, sabihin niya, okay sana kung meron siyang certification, ganyan, doon sila papasok na uh, will this be considered as a preferred skill set? Uh, so kapag kasi sinabi natin preferred skill set dyan, um, okay kung meron, kung wala, um, pero meron ka nung core skill set na inahanap natin, uh, pasok ka pa rin. So, ayun. Alright, alright, thank you. That's uh, very useful and practical mm-hmm. tips doon sa mga uh, nag-apply sa atin. Well, kanina, uh, just a follow-up question pala doon sa nabanggit mo. Does uh, certification belongs to that Three core or core three kumbaga, qualities <laughs> ng isang applicants right now? Well, um, to tell you honestly, in, sa entire experiences ko, um, hindi naman siya uh, make or break talaga. Kasi, um, well, um, just to share with everyone, not all uh, people that uh, has a certification into this specific practice, eh, can really do the job uh, pagdating sa, sa ground na. So what matters most is the actual experience, actual exposure to 
the type of work. And then it's a plus if meron ka talaga noong certification na yun. And I, I would still encourage you guys to pursue uh, certification. Reason why? Kasi it will add up to your ano, market value. So um, especially in a multicultural company, um, somehow isa yung sa mga factors na napakompensate ng mga hiring managers if you have a certification to this and that. And uh, I know it's, you know, it's a very costly investment, pero um, it's a, you know, a, a very good investment naman kasi definitely there will be an ROI. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, an ROI sa career mo, progression, if your aim is to climb the ladder or if you want to gain more, uh, you know, uh, greener, uh, pasture or greener income, definitely it will add value then. Kasi somehow, if you have certifications, uh, pwede maging pat mo, maging consultant ka eh. Diba? So, uh, ayun. Right. So, uh, I agree with uh, doon sa sinabi ni, ni uh, Brother Junius. No? Kasi, uh, ang, ang labanan talaga is hindi naman porke certified ka is talagang ikaw na yung kumbaga ma-hire. Kumbaga sabi nga natin, you can be a candidate, it can be your advantage dun sa ibang applicants. Pero ang talagang deciding factor is that the skills and the knowledge that you have na gagawin mo dun sa, sa job. Kung kaya mo talaga. For example, yung mga previous experiences mo, mm-hmm. mga projects mo na na-handle, di ba? So, yung mga yun. That's correct. Pero, But, uh, it, um, it, um, it, um, natin it, dyan, so, na, Yeah, go Sorry, on. go ahead. <laughs> Basta ang ano natin dyan, ang key word natin dyan is, it's a plus. You know, it's a plus sa, sa uh, market value mo if you have those certifications. Those are the things that we can, siguro, later on, consider as a, you know, compensating ano, factor. Mm-hmm. Pero, uh, end of the day, yung hireability, um, it doesn't guarantee you uh, na you will really land a job. All right. Thank you for sharing that, brother. Napakagandang tip nun. So, guys, if you have questions, if you have questions about um, resumes, if you have que- questions about job hunting tips, post them on the comment section below para uh, maitanong natin kay Sir Genius and I'm sure he can give you the um, hi- um, possible answer dun sa mga question nyo. So, um, Ren Zavala, Del Sandugo, magandang tanghali sa inyong lahat. Lester Man- Mandulado, good afternoon. So, um, next question natin would be, um, ito, probably nasagot mo na rin kanina, siguro daanan lang natin. When you're looking for a candidate, for example, katulad nga nung nabanggit mo kanina, um, h- how do you screen those applicants or those resume? Kung baga, um, you, you check certifications o kaya naman you, you check the background, for example, and then uh, paano ba yung, yung mga wala nito? For example, you're, you're hiring a, a network engineer wala siyang exp- experience, for example, sa data center, for example, um, ano man na siya, out na ba siya dun sa, sa list ng mga candidate, etc. So, how, how do you pick, kumbaga, yung mga, uh, for example, mapupunta sa top five na pagpipilian, etc. Right, so, uh, very, ano, uh, very uh, uh, helpful, ano yan, uh, uh, question sa mga candidates natin. So, first is, um, The, I mentioned earlier, no, uh, we identify yung top three uh, core skill set and then yung top three uh, preferred skill set. So um, my practice actually is um, I check first for the top three skill set, yung core skill set talaga ng candidate. So to your example, uh, let's say network engineer siya pero wala siyang exposure sa data center, no? Uh, normally, what I do there is... Uh, I keep them in our, uh, you know, uh, waitlist uh, profile. Bakit sila nagkikip doon sa may waitlist uh, profile? Kasi um, ang nangyayari dyan is that um, in the event that we were able to exhaust na lahat nung nasa pipeline namin, and then we have those mga candidates na pasok naman siya, let's say, hindi niya na, na-checkan lahat yung tatlo, no? Uh, let's say, may isa siya na kulang doon, nasa waitlist natin siya. Th- those are the profiles or those are the candidates na I can 
uh, reintroduce ulit sa hiring manager and then get their buy-in if they would like to meet the candidate. Kasi um, I, I really believe that um, wala namang dapat nasasayang na candidates kasi lahat naman niya may potential. It's just that, of course, uh, kung talagang sobrang layo na nung, ina- nung credentials mo, yung skill set mo, sa may ina mo, definitely cross out yun. Pero if uh, you have the you know the minimum um, skill set or years that we are really looking for definitely will still you know uh, renegotiate and revisit the profile okay all right very helpful question guys so again if i were you i'll take note every single detail na sinasabi ni brother Jesus kasi i'm sure i'm sure if you're finding a job if you're trying or if you're kumbaga thinking to move on to a higher position for example makakatulong yan kasi what he's sharing is the actual process na ginagamit nila in the IT recruitment to to find a suitable candidate dun sa mga positions na yun. So, i-take note nyo yan o kaya panoorin nyo ng replay mamaya para makapag-take notes kayo kasi promise, it's very useful. Kasi ako kahit, um, kumbaga na, I, I've been into senior position pero dami ko pa rin napupulot na points from what he's saying. Okay, so uh, ito, may question si uh, Brother James uh, sa atin. Uh, brother Junior. So, kung expired daw ba yung certification, nagiging plus factor pa rin daw ba? Well, yes. Uh, plus factor pa rin naman siya. Uh, reason is, um, somehow, uh, you already know the practice. Ano? It's just that, um, depende kung anong klaseng certification ba itong kinuha mo. Kasi, um, the reason why nag expire yung mga ibang certification, kasi, uh, yung practice nila is nagpo-progress yan. So, for example, um, ITIL, nag-expire yan parate, di ba? Um, or kung hindi man, um, meron yung mga mga certifications na, let's say, yung sa, sa PMP, if you're into uh, project management, uh, definitely may certain years or period lang siya na pwede mong magamit kasi ang um, ang uh, process or yung technology practices natin, nag evolve din yan. As we go along, as we progress, definitely marami tayong mga may improve along the way. So kung ano yung applicable uh, certification mo ngayon, probably for the next uh, three or five years, it may not be applicable na sa market kasi somehow nag-upgrade na rin yung practices nila. Pero to answer the question, kung expired na ba yung certification, mag magiging plus factor pa rin ba? Somehow, yes, kasi you still know the practice. Siguro updated lang yung yung practice na meron ka. It's just that you need to upgrade it as well or somehow uh, cope with the the progression. Yep. So, uh, tama yung sinabi ni Brother Junius ko. I-add ko lang din. So, in terms of CCNA, CCNA and other IT certifications, it's the same thing, di ba? So, alam naman natin na na-expire every three years kasi nga Katulad din ng sinabi niya, the technology evolves eh, lalo na sa, sa industry natin, talagang fast face yung changes, yung uh, discovery, and um, yun nga, so kailangan natin mag-adapt, kailangan din natin mag-evolve. Pero um, ang, ang, sa pagkakaalam ko, uh, based from personal experience, kahit expire na, nilalagay pa rin natin, nilalagay pa rin namin eh, dun sa resume mo, di ba? Yung, yung previous certifications mo and then yung current certification mo. Just to uh, show na I've been here, I've been there, kumbaga. So it's a plus for me. Well, yes. Um, right, so another question. Mm-hmm. Go, go, bro. Bebe, sige, okay lang. Um, I, I will just, ano lang naman, uh, bottom line lang naman nun is uh, the, the practice, uh, the actual practice, if you really uh, know the, the practice. Kasi if... There are candidates then na nilalagay nila kahit na alam mo na complete lang nila yung certification. Uh, I mean that the training course pero hindi pa sila certified kasi somehow that already matters kasi somehow nag undergo ka na nung nung training. It's just that hindi ka pa certified, 'di ba? So um just an addition lang dun sa may sinabi mo na yes, ina-add pa rin natin siya kasi nga uh, somehow Alam na natin siya eh. uh, It's a matter of, uh, you know, we were able to practice it. Nagkaroon tayo ng certification before. Siguro hindi lang natin siya na, na-renew, di ba? 
Yun, eh, so, alam ko medyo, so, ano, medyo expensive ang mag-renew na mag-renew ng mga certifications eh. Uh, it's a yes, very costly yes. investment talaga. Tama. Yeah. So, uh, probably it answers other questions. Uh, you have uh, you have guys in mind, yung katulad ng sinabi ni Brother Juniors na um, it doesn't really uh, required in some positions na certified ka, pero if you have the training, kumbaga if you have a workshop or seminars, or a background dun sa technology na hinahanap, it would be a plus, kahit hindi ka pa certified. Kasi nag-undergun ka na ng training, makakatulong yun. Right? Another question. Paano po pag walang certificate, pero may background sa ISP? So probably, it, nasagot na rin natin to kanina. Cherry, magandang tanghali sa'yo. Thank you for question. So yun nga, if you have background, kahit hindi ka pa certified, as long as you can demonstrate the skills, kumbaga, uh, it can be a plus or a hiring factor din if the background na meron ka or experience na meron ka is related dun sa trabaho. So ito, mm-hmm. ito maganda um, kung... Mm-hmm. Let Go, me bro. just add lang, no, uh, Billy. So, um, apart from the actual training, um, yung certifications, um, there are hiring managers na they will really look for an actual experience. So, it varies kung uh, ano yung preference ni hiring manager natin. So, um, if let's say, an entry-level position lang yung inahanap natin, and then you've been exposed to uh, those trainings, pero wala pang actual uh, exposure dun sa may platform, uh, that is still uh, a plus factor kasi that's your edge already to other candidates kasi we're talking about an entry-level position. Now, if we're looking for a seasoned uh, candidate, definitely kailangan yung yung actual experience mo, uh, let's say, uh, actual exposure sa data center, sa network security, kailangan talaga yun. Kasi pagka sabak mo doon, na-hire ka, let's say, um, ik- ikaw yung na-consider for that position, biglang sinabi sa'yo, uh, think or something doon sa may network security natin. A, uh, nag-claim ka lang doon sa may CV mo na alam mo siya, pero wala ka talaga actual experience. Uh, definitely, disaster na yun. <laughs> dun sa may end nung nag-hire sa'yo, di ba? Kasi you cannot really add value dun sa may, uh, sa may network security infrastructure nila nun, di ba? So, uh, okay, good point. Okay. So, uh, if you're going to add something in your resume, make sure, make sure that you can actually do or perform that skills or that job. Kasi babalikan at babalikan kayo niyan kung talagang ginamit nyo lang siya as kumbaga pogi points, di ba? So, <laughs> make sure <laughs> Ayun yung uh-huh. i-perform ko. Totoo, totoo. Ito pa bro. So uh, probably this is um, na-encounter mo na lagi ito na kumbaga itong tanong ni MJ. Uh, mm-hmm. Technical, pero in terms of communication skills, diba, magkocalls ba kami? Kailangan ba magaling mag-English? Pero mm-hmm. technical, di ba? Kasi IT. Now, uh, what's your thought on this? Well, depende yan kung anong klaseng position yung ina natin or kung ano yung nature ng, ng industry na papasokin natin. So, um, rule of the thumb naman parate, if it's a multicultural company, apart from the technical skill set, definitely they're looking for someone who can really speak the business language. And what is the business language? Which, which is the, the English language, di ba? Universal language yan eh. So, regardless anong race, regardless kung anong culture yan, English pa rin ang gagamitin nila. So, the reason why it's a, it's a very important uh, skill set sa mga multicultural companies kasi um, you talk to a lot of uh, you know people um, onshore offshore and this are you know a uh, regional uh, division already or global scale yung support natin so definitely uh, communication skill is uh, really important to that apart from the technical skill set na meron now if you're into a local uh, company, um, let's say, um, mga malalaking corporations din naman natin dito, they also require, uh, you know, a good communication skill set. But um, um, it's not really, uh, you know, a huge factor na ma-decline or ma-reject ka sa job offer because of, uh, because you can't really communicate uh, in English language. Um, the reason why it is important then sa kanila, uh, for example, uh, you will present to uh, a client, uh, a stakeholder ninyo, uh, and then business language pa rin naman siya. Um, 
English or Taglish is uh, yung, yung ginagamit natin, di ba? Pero, um, um, sabi dito, no? Kung i-rate ko from 1 to 10, if it's a multinational company, I must say uh, it's a 10 talaga. Uh, it's really important. Now, if it's uh, local, uh, it varies. You know, there, kasi I've been into a company wherein communication skill is not really an important thing sa kanila. As long as you can really do the job, you can do the 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 actual uh, job, that's already fine with them. Kasi uh, I, I've been exposed to uh, nationwide uh, recruitment then. So nagre-recruit ako ng mga provincial positions before. So mas preferred nga nila is yung local dialect ng no, no, probinsya na yun. Kasi kung, syempre nga naman, kakausapin mo ng Tagalog, hindi naman marun mo Tagalog yung mga nandu doon, di ba? So, it, it varies. Uh, I, I cannot give you an actual rating if it's a local, but at least for the the multicultural companies, uh, it's a 10. Now, for the actual job, syempre, eto lang yan, rule of the thumb lang parate. You need to walk your talk, di ba? So, you you claim this and that, during the actual job, you should really know how to do it. You should really know how to deliver it. Kasi, uh, end of the day, um, that is your uh, your uh, portfolio. Eh. Kapag ka nasira yung portfolio mo, and uh, the community that we have sa, sa IT, somehow, um, kahit na malaki siya, no, medyo maliit pa rin siya, madaling kumalat yung information. So uh, you really need to be very careful with the things that you claim do sa may CV mo. Uh, you need to be very sure that you can really do the job kapag ka, ano yung sinulat mo do sa may resume natin. Kasi just to set uh, to give an example, um, one of my uh, senior hiring directors before mentioned that um, marami kasi sa atin ang magagaling sumulat na resume. You know? Uh, I, I, I did this, uh, I, I, I've been into this project, pero pagdating sa actual job, doon na tayo nayayari. Right? So, we really need to make sure na kung ano lang sinulat natin, yun lang talaga yung kaya natin i-deliver. Right? So, yun nga, kagaya nang nabanggit natin kanina, kumbaga, be honest din, kasi babalikan at babalikan ka talaga niyan. Kung Kung di mo alam, most likely, wag mo nang ilagay and then alamin mo muna or kumbaga gain some exposure or experience bago mo ilagay dun. For example, yung skill set na yun. Kasi nga baka mamaya, for example, pag bigyan ka ng project, ikaw yung ipahandle dun sa outage na ganyan, mm-hmm. hindi mo pala alam. Ilagay mo lang para magpapogi. Di ba? So, baka balikan ka. Uh, kawa ba naman? Sayang naman, kumbaga. Pero um, i-add ko lang din kanina dun sa... Uh, bukod dun sa mga valid points na sinare ni Brother Junius is, um, MJ, w- when you're working, sabi nga ni Junius kanina, if you're working in a multicultural or multinational company, kailangan talaga kailangan mo mag-English kahit sabihin mo na IT ka kasi dadating yung time or talagang dadating at dadating yung time, magjo-join ka ng mga conference bridges, mga outages, ganyan, na ang kausap mo is mga network engineer or mga mga IT sa iba't ibang bansa or iba't ibang team. And then dun sa conference bridge or dun sa bridge na yun, English yung ginagamit nyo. So, you, kumbaga kailangan mong uh, makapag-communicate kung ano yung nangyayari on your side, for example, sa network, and then how are you going to explain it, etc., etc. So, communication skills, importante din yan. One of the critical skills exactly. natin sa mga ASMA IT. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So, uh, questions din ni Ariana, bro. So, uh-huh. uh, kung ano daw yung ibibigay mong core factor or core skills uh, in the network engineer positions from your experience? Uh, I cannot really, you know, give you Walang specific, uh, specific Pero probably kasi, uh, um, um, just, uh, what's varies. on your mind, siguro. Uh, it varies kasi uh, when you say network uh, engineering, napakalawak na ito eh. Generic yan eh. Yeah. Yung, yung yep, network yep. engineering natin, di ba? So probably uh, mer mer merong mga requirements na heavily focused sila sa data center sa network operations. Meron mga requirements na he- heavy sila sa network security. Diba? Meron yung mga requirements na heavy sila sa desk side. So, it varies talaga. Uh, I cannot really give you uh, a specific core skills na hinahanap kasi it really depends on the uh, the need of the business. 
So ayun. Right. So uh, thank you for that. How about bro this one? Age factor. Tingin mo. I think um ito lagi itong tanong ng mga estudyante ko eh. Um uh, I'm 35 na. Gusto mm-hmm. ko mag-CNA. Aabot pa ba ako? Kumbaga, <laughs> is there a chance for me kumbaga makahabol ganyan? In your experience, um factor ba yung yung age natin lalo na sa Pilipinas? Well, to tell you honestly, hin- hindi naman siya ganun ka ano, ka relevant yung yung age uh, limit natin pagdating sa mga certifications kasi uh, uh, as we all know naman di ba age doesn't matter naman pagdating sa ano sa learning so walang 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 bata walang matanda pagdating sa learning and to be very uh, you know frank with each and every one of you uh, there are um, you know uh, into senior uh, level already and then senior narin talaga sila but they are still, you know, enrolling their, you know, their uh, themselves to a certain uh, course, certificate course, because um, it's very important sa kanila na meron sila nung uh, progressive learning curve. Because to be uh, to be very honest with with uh, all of you, hindi lahat mabibigay sa inyo sa uh, sa sa company na pinagtatrabawan niyo. So you really need to have an initiative to explore for other uh, you know avenues para mas mag-progress ka. Kasi uh, if you will just rely on the trainings and certifications na ipipigay sa iyo ni company, definitely ano, ma- baka mapag-iwanan ka kasi to tell you honestly hindi naman niya nagiging ano eh, uh, hindi siya talaga masyadong top priority ng mga ibang companies yung uh, certifications yung grooming sa sa mga employees nila what matters most to them is yung tal kung kaya mong gawin yung trabaho di ba now the certification if you want to to gain certification regardless of the age you can still do that ang question na nga lang diyan is kung hanggang kailan mo siya kayang i-absorb kasi there's a certain age din eh na uh, mas mahirap ng mag-absorb ng knowledge, di ba? There's a certain study. Uh, <laughs> hindi ko lang siya ano, na, na-pull up dito. <laughs> I agree, I agree. So, um, it's, ano pa rin, skills and, kumbaga, character attitude pa rin ng labanan. It, kumbaga, yung age mo, doesn't really matter. If you can do the job, you can be hired. Ganun lang kasimple, di ba? <laughs> Kasi, um, to share din pala, we have some students in in our program like the CCNA course ko na 40 plus na and uh, although na sa US sila pero Pinoy they're just starting their career kasi nire-require ng company nila na magkaroon ng certification kasi nga they, they need to keep up they need to learn this new technology etc etc pero kahit ganun yung edad nila um yun tuloy pa rin yung aral katulad nga sinabi kanina ni Brother Junior you need to have the initiative to to learn yung mga new technologies para talagang madagdagan yung skills nyo bukod pa dun sa mga nakukuha nyo sa sa company or within your environment. Thank you bro. So uh ayan, so ibang mga viewers natin nagsi-share din ng mga sentiments or kumbaga ng mga advice nila. So si Nico, di daw di daw factor yung age kasi 28 siya nag-start mm-hmm. ng career niya sa network pero ayun. So hindi pa late. Okay, so tama siya. Okay? Right? So, ayan. So, tama. Ito rin yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, sinishare ni Brother James. Uh, ingat din daw sa paglagay ng skills sa resume kasi nga baba ka mamaya, itanong sa'yo sa technical interview, hindi mo masagot. So, ayan. Kung ano lang yung talagang alam mo na kaya mong i-prove, kaya mong gawin, guys, yun lang yung ilagay nyo para talagang uh, hindi kayo balikan, hindi kayo potokan, hindi nga in the future. <laughs> Saka, right, so, uh, din, no? Um, no, yung younger generation natin, no? uh, mas, ano sila, mas, um, mas suerte sila, kumbaga, kasi somehow, uh, Cisco, uh, especially yung networking, ano, uh, course nila, is already part ng curriculum ng majority of the universities and colleges dito. So, um, once they step out of that school, kailangan na lang talaga nila is i- pondohan yung exam kasi somehow naging part na siya ng curriculum nila. So, kumbaga, uh, nag-aaral pa lang sila 
yung skills, yung fundamentals, itinatanim na sa kanila. So, once they graduate uh, from that school, eh, baga, mas mataas na yung chance na ma-employed sila kung network engineering yung gusto nilang i-pursue. I cannot name names uh, nung mga school na yun kasi di naman tayo bayad <laughs> nung mga yun. So, uh, agree, pero agree, agree. There, there are schools wherein they already incorporated those uh, those uh, trainings, those, those modules sa curriculum nila. Yep, yep, I agree. So, I have few members, I have few students na familiar na sila dun sa mga fundamental katulad na sinabi mo ng Cisco Technologies and maswerte sila. Isa pa, there are a lot of uh, experts right now having vlogs, having video tutorials, etc. na dati wala eh. Diba? Yung mga panahon natin, wala pa masyadong ganun, wala pa masyadong Facebook groups, wala pa masyadong YouTube channels na nagsishare. Kahit pa paano ng mga, mga fundamental tutorials or yung experience sila in working in an IT na pwede nilang kapulutan ng aral. Katulad dito, for example, dati walang mga ganito. Diba? Pero if you're a beginner, for example, if you're hiring, I mean, if you're looking for a job right now, yung mga sinabi ni Brother Junius kanina, promise, makakatulong sa inyo yun. So, maswerte yung mga generations na, natin ngayon. <laughs> Sama tayo doon. <laughs> Kasi nga, we have a lot of resources, we have a lot of, kumbaga, tools na pwede na gamit in, in kumbaga, uh, developing ourselves as well as in, in looking for those jobs or applications. Okay? Um... Uh, I'll gonna move on dun sa question sa meron ako. Probably this is the last one or last two, bro. So in your experience, bro, um, what field or what specialization in the IT is the most in demand right now? I know probably you mm -hmm. handle in different fields, pero siguro kahit pa paano meron kang idea or in your experience, meron kang um, nakikita in the future or in the near future na Ano yung biglang naging in demand? Ano yung laging naghahanap? Kumbaga, tapos ano yung mataas ang sweldo na IT mm -hmm. industry or IT positions right now? Okay. Sige. So, to be very ano naman, no? fair with uh, the IT. Um, uh, if we talk about IT, it's uh, a lucrative uh, skill set talaga. So, as mentioned earlier, um, in our generation 21st century all of the companies they are now into you know uh they are already part of the technology revolution so in order for them to cope with the business the the global trend definitely they will uh, uh embrace uh yung mga uh, infrastructure mga software so definitely mag-hire at mag-hire sila ng mga tao mga developers and engineers na mag uh, may maintain ng system sa kanila. Now to answer the the question, uh, which one of the uh, IT uh, careers is uh, in demand? Well, um, to be uh, you know uh, to be fair with everyone, um, it's ano uh, at least for now um, data. Uh, warehousing data analytics is the uh, the hottest uh, uh, job in IT. Reason why? Because data warehousing, data analytics, that's the bloodline of each business. Imagine naga handle sila ng um, mga mga confidential informations, naga handle sila ng very sensitive information para sa business. It can be uh, an information kung paano nag-run yung business nila. It can be an information kung paano nag-generate ng revenue yung business nila. So, napaka uh, in demand na itong skill set na to. Kasi nowadays, um, being a technical person is, you know, it's it's already, uh, you know, uh, an advantage if you're gonna go on the, the battlefield. But Apart from being a technical, you need to be a business-minded person as well. You know, so you need to incorporate that. You need to embrace that. Because uh, as we move along, you know, um, definitely all of the actions that you have, uh, it should have a huge impact sa business. And um, yung mga may malalaking impact sa business is yung mga nasa data analytics natin. So 
probably meron mga ilan ilan sa mga viewers natin ang uh, uh, exposed na sa data analytics, sa data engineering. Kasi um, if you've been into uh, you know server maintenance, storage maintenance, uh, can be a good start na ng sa data warehousing natin and data analytics. Kasi as mentioned nga, uh, ito yung ano eh, parang pinaka uh, bloodline ng ng mga business ngayon. And then of course, hindi pa rin nauhuli dyan yung sila mga may hawak sa infra, sa software, yung ERP, enterprise applications. So, ayun. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, bro. So, um, ayan. So, if you're um, thinking to shift uh, career, o kaya naman, if you're into data na already, it's a good um, indication na you're in the wrong, ah, you're in the right path. Sorry. <laughs> you're in the right direction. Kasi talagang, uh, right now kasi in, in the, sabihin na natin, 24th, uh, I mean, 20th, 20th century, or in the modern age, information, mm -hmm. yeah, 21st century, information na talaga yung, or data, mm -hmm. information na talaga yung, kumbaga, assets ng company, di ba? Yung mga data mm -hmm. points, how they collect customers, yung mga behavior ng customers nila, etc. Those are data na pinaprocess in order to, to, to grow the business. So, ang ganda nung sinabi niya na you also have to be a business-minded plus your technical skills and capability kasi talagang, Ano yun? Bundle lagi right now in this age. So, question guys. We're waiting for your questions kasi yung ibang questions ko kanina na naka-reserve sa akin was already answered dun sa mga previous questions natin. Pero uh, meron pala akong isang na-skip, bro. Um, mm -hmm. For example, a beginner or a fresh grad right now in these times, um, ano yung ma-advise mo sa kanila? If they're, for example, looking for a job kasi ang labanan ngayon, if you look at the the job postings online sa mga mm -hmm. uh, mga for example Job Street, Glassdoor, uh, Monster etc dun sa mga job portals, laging merong hinahanap na experience, di ba? So 3 or 5 years experience, eh, kaya lang mm -hmm. if I'm a fresh graduate, wala pa ako noon kasi nga graduate ko lang, di ba? Now, mm -hmm. what can you advise dun sa mga fresh grad or mga beginner or yun nga newbies natin na naghahanap ng trabaho, lalong-lalo na na-related sa IT? Right. So um, there are a lot of opportunities naman we're in. They will not really require uh, a specific year of experience. Uh, what you can really do is to uh, really uh, understand kung ano yung mga companies na yun. Uh, expand your, ano, your, uh, your, your hunting field. So baka you're two bucks sa isang company but uh, marami pang iba na companies na nag uh, bibigay ng opportunity sa mga fresh graduates. So um, that's one. Another uh, tip will be uh, for you to make a research. You, know, you really need to make a research kung ano ba yung uh, company na papasukan mo, ano ba yung position na ina-applyan mo para pagdating na tinanong ka, nakareceive ka ng invitation sa uh, recruitment, definitely you can answer a uh, few details, if not all, diba? Kasi ano bang indicator doon kapag ka nag-conduct ka ng research? It only means that you are really interested sa possession, you are really interested sa business or sa, sa company na ina-applyan mo. Kasi uh, typical mindset, uh, shotgun uh, approach for in. I'll, I have this list of uh, this companies uh, uy, kailangan ko lang network associate. Send ko lang. Sasend ko sa lahat yan. So, ang nangyayari, hindi, wala kang focus na, ano, na, na company. So, what you can do is, um, you can expand the companies, the list of the companies that you have. Siguro, ay, ilista mo yung top five or kung gusto mo sampu yung, yung companies na nasa, meron ka, ilista mo siya. Pero huwag ka magsatal sa isang company lang. Kasi, um, this was my mistake as well before. Um, uh, sabi ko talagang, etong company lang gusto kong pasukan. And I am so fixated na ito lang yung company na gusto kong pasukan kahit na maraming mga ibang companies na nagkahanap ng recruitment associate back then. So uh, hanggang so, umabot yung, point, yung time na natanong na ako na magulang ko na, 
uh, bakit hindi ka pa nagahanap ng trabaho? Sabi, nagahanap ako kaso wala pang vacancy yung gusto kong company. And sinabi sa akin ng, ng parents ko noon, natural, hindi ka nila antayin. You need to look for a different ano, uh, uh, battlefield or playing field mo. So, doon nagsink in sa akin na, o oh nga naman, hindi lang isang company yung pwede makapagbigay sa akin ng ganitong klaseng experience. So, I really need to expand the the options, the, the battlefield that I have. And then, I come up with a list of the companies. Inaral ko kung ano yung mga companies na yun. And then, ano yung position na ina-applyan ko, inaral ko rin siya. Para pagdating na, pa-receive ako ng invitation kay ganito, kay ganyang company. Uh, pagka tinanong nila ako, I can answer them. You know, it's a way for us to to impress our recruiters. Kasi somehow sa mga phone screeners, uh, first impression, parati yung ano sa kanila. Uh, if you were able to mention this, 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 and nasa checklist nila yan, pasok ka na. Next, next, next ano na tayo, stage ng interview. So it's a matter of you uh, doing your preparation bago pa sumabak talaga sa mga interviews. Agree, agree. Ang ganda bro na sinabi mo, no? So, uh, minsan kasi, uh, talagang totoo yung sinabi na we are being, uh, or we, we are fixated with that company kasi we good, uh, we hear good things about this and then yung ibang mga kilala natin or kumbaga mga iniidolo natin work on this company. Pero, uh, kumbaga, if it's taking too long or talagang kumbaga, sabi nga nung sinabi mo kanina, natural, hindi ka nila aantayin. So, you have to move on. Okay, expand. Mm-hmm your uh, options, expand your, your environment. Kung baga kasi, baka may mas magandang opportunity sa nagaantay sa'yo dun sa iba na probably related din naman. Na kung baga almost same industry or same company mm-hmm. lang din na nagaantay sa, sa labas or sa iba. So, huwag tayong uh, kung baga fixated or kung baga let's explore other opportunities outside kung talagang uh, wala dun sa unang apply natin, for example. So, ganda na sinabi mo, bro. Now, may question dito si John Paul, bro. Um, sabi niya, mm-hmm. good PM daw, bakit daw yung ibang mga company may contract na one or two years sa IT position? So, siguro ikaw na sa magot nito. <laughs> Sige. Um, depende kasi yan sa, sa business need. So, there are positions na talagang seasonal siya. So, uh, or meron mga positions na depende sa project, current project na meron sila. So, let's say, migration ang project na meron ako. Eh, wala naman akong, uh, wala naman plan si, si business na mag-hire ng permanent uh, employee kasi uh, hindi naman sila regularly na merong migration. Diba? It can be a one-time migration lang. So, what they will do is they will open a contract. Um, so, Diyan napapasok yung six months, one year, kasi project-based. So, if there's an ongoing project, merong, merong kang contract. If the project is already ended, then definitely your engagement with them, it will be null and void na kasi uh, na-fulfill mo na kung ano yung dapat na i-deliver mo sa kanila. Ito yung pumapa- dito pumapasok yung mga uh, consultants. Uh, normally, sila na yung nag-aasikaso niyan. Sila na yung gagawa niyan for you na you need to, I will fix your system, uh, give me one year, give me uh, this uh, number of, uh, X number of people to, to help me to deliver the output. And then, um, doon napapasok yung ano, mas premium na bayad sa mga consultants. Actually, uh, marami, mga, marami akong mga friends na nasa sa IT na they are doing a consultancy job. Kasi somehow, it's more lucrative Although, um, kailangan lang talaga meron kang good uh, number of clients na ginag- binibigyan mo ng, ng, ano mo, ng services mo, no? ng professional services mo. Kasi if it's just one or two companies, uh, it will not really, uh, you know, uh, 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 profession- I mean, it will not really uh, uh, ano ba, sustainable sa, sa family ninyo. Kasi as we all know, um yung yung cost of living natin ngayon nowadays di ba mas mas mataas na so ayun yep so i agree so i, I also have friends and colleagues na into consulting so mga IT consultant and tama yung sinabi ni uh, 
brother juniors na it really depends on the project kasi minsan you know yun ang problema sa IT consultant eh once you're done with this project you need to look for another one for example if um wala silang plano na continue yung service for example so you have to look for another one yun yung disadvantage kaya may mga contractual or project based um consultant or project based na 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 IT kasi yun lang talaga yung kailangan ng industry or for example yung business na yun. Right so ito may, may tanong bro si probably we're on last two questions so if you have questions right now kasi uh, I'm not sure kung naka-shift ngayon si Brother Junius pero syempre hindi naman natin uh, ma-hold also <laughs> him to be here for as long as we want syempre meron din siyang uh, inakaso so we're gonna have at least two more questions for you guys. And then sasagutin natin or sasagutin ni Brother Juniors. And then yung mga follow-up questions nyo, if you have, probably you can submit it to me. And then i-relay ko na lang sa kanya and we'll post them on the page na lang in the future kung kailangan. Okay, so sabi ni Ray Mar Gualbes Pro, will software-defined mm-hmm. networking kill network engineers, CLI? So I'm not sure kung familiar ka or kung narinig mo na. Pero probably yes. The software-defined yeah, yeah. More on, uh, kumbaga, automation. Mm-hmm. Wala na ba yung mga network engineers yeah, yeah. kasi we're on automation right now? Parang ganun eh. Actually, hindi naman. Um, reason, kasi um, even if naka-automated na yung, yung buong infrastructure ninyo, um, this is what they call robotics na eh. Uh, RPA na siya. Diba? Um, it will not really, uh, you know, uh, kill yung network engineering natin kasi as long as we have a you know a network infrastructure that we need to maintain definitely there will be a network engineer na kailangan natin i-hire so i guess uh, the best uh, tip that i can share to all of the network engineers that we have here is kasi that's inevitable thing eh. we ne- we really need to progress we need to cope with the the uh, the changing uh, environment, so if the 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 direction is to automation, then we need we need to upskill ourselves to become an automation engineer as well. Because um, the beauty ng ng robotics ngayon ng automation dito sa Philippines bago pa siya. Hindi pa siya talaga ano uh, na explore ng karamihan sa atin and um just to share with you um we recently started our uh, automation robotics automation uh, team here in uh, Manila so um basing it from the list of the candidates na na receive ko konti pa lang sila na nandito sa sa ano sa Manila sa Philippines so um solid foundation na actually they they been into network engineering, network infrastructure, then eventually shifted to the automation. Because uh, as mentioned, um, hindi naman namatay talaga sa network infra. Because yung automation, yung yung, yung robotics uh, process automation, is still part of infrastructure and operations. You know, so hindi siya hindi siya kama sa hindi talaga niya pinapatay yung network engineers natin. It's a it's a matter of is giving uh, you know an evolution to our network engineers because uh, as mentioned it's inevitable uh, that's the direction of the technology and we need to to cope we need to evolve as well yep yep i agree with uh, what brother junior said kasi hindi natin kayang pigilan kung saan papunta yung direction ng industry mm-hmm. so ang pinakamagandang gawin natin is we need to adapt with what the market needs. So kung kailangan ng mga company, kung kailangan ng mga businesses ng uh, programming skills or automation skills, cloud skills, katulad ng sinabi niya kanina, data analytics skills or data skills, we need to learn. Okay, we need to adapt. Okay. Uh, kailangan Sorry. natin. I mean, no problem. Um, kailangan natin yung mga yun para maging in-demand din tayo sa market. Right, so last question, bro. Probably this is one is the the, the last, spe- uh, probably the, la- the the special question before we let you go on this show. Anyway, mm-hmm. thank you for uh, having. I mean, thank you for giving us time in being here. 
napakaganda ng mga sinasagot and mga binibigay mong information and I'm sure ako it's helping a lot of uh, aspiring IT whether maghahanap sila ng trabaho o hindi. Okay, so itong question ni Reniel Guillermo, bro. How do you know daw that you need to look for another company? <laughs> okay, so paano mo, I mean, probably sa akin siguro personal, pero can you share your thoughts about this? Nanonood ba dito yung ano, mga taga-RC? <laughs> Anyway, um well I agree with ano with uh, Billy dun sa may um it's personal preference parate. Um kasi I always believe na there are certain factors na will keep you rooted sa isang company or sa isang organization or it can be dependent on the personal aspiration that you have. Let's say um you really want to uh, climb the ladder for the next uh, three or five years in time, you want to become a network uh, manager. Eh, kaso si company mo parang um, medyo nag slow down yung career mo. So definitely, your option is to explore an opportunity wherein it can really satisfy your uh, aspiration in career. Or uh, if you're looking for a company wherein um, it's like an extension or you know, it's like a family dun sa, may sa, sa, sa business na yun, parang feeling mo hindi ka nag-work kasi nas, parang, parang mga kasama mo is, uh, you know, uh, brothers and sisters mo lang din talaga. Hindi mo nararamdaman yung boss and employee relationship, yung ganun, may malaking wall sa inyo. Uh, it can be a factor na you will stay to a company. So, it really depends kung ano yung gusto mo sa isang company. And normally, those are the questions that I ask to my candidates. What are what are they really looking for a company? Kasi from there, I would already have an idea kung hanggang kailan lang ba mag stay tong tao na to kapag kahinar ko siya. Kasi there are, there are, I know, uh, there are, people na talagang money-driven sila. They will always tell you na, I'm looking for a greener pasture. And yes, uh, wala namang masama dyan. That's your, your aspiration. That's your, that's what you are looking for. So definitely, uh, yun yung isasagot mo. Di ba? There are, comp- there are uh, people na sasabihin sa'yo na, uh, I'm looking for a good culture. And from there, uh, you would already know, magre-reflect ka ngayon. Kumusta ba yung culture namin? Matalas bang nag-aaway yung mga engineer namin doon? Eh mukhang mahihain yung, yung candidate natin. Pag kanilagay ko ba doon, baka ba, ma-overwhelm ba siya? Ma-overpowered ba siya? So you would already know kung uh, yung tao ba ay maglalas sa isang company. So, um, ayun. I, I hope I was able to answer your question. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for your thoughts, bro. So uh, I add ko lang din kasi sabi ko nga kanina, it's uh, really uh, personal eh. You'll ask yourself, uh, kumbaga na, worth it pa ba na magstay ako or mag, mag lumabas na ako in this company? Kasi sabi nga ni Brother Juniors, um, there are instances or there are situations na kahit hindi mataas or malaki yung sahod mo in this company pero hindi ka stress or kaya naman masaya ka na parang yung mga katrabaho mo is mga kaibigan mo lang, kahit boss mo, kumbaga, mga, para mga tropa-tropa mo lang, it can be a reason for a person to stay on that job for, for years. Diba? And then, dun sa iba naman, na kahit mataas yung sahod mo, pero yung level of stress naman is talagang hindi ka na pinapatulog, it can be a reason din naman para one week pa lang siya dun, umalis na siya. So it really, really depends on your personal aspirations, katulad ng sinabi ni Brother Junius, and it really depends on, on your motivation or what you're looking really into a job. Okay? So, I guess that would be our final question, bro. Again, thank you, thank you for having, uh, I mean, for for giving us time to be here. Napakaganda mm-hmm. ng mga senior mo, and I'm sure ako na maraming napulot. Maraming nakuha yung mga uh, viewers natin right now. So, um, is there anything na gusto mong ipromote? Do you have openings in RC or Ring Central right now? Or any events or mm-hmm. anything uh, sa tingin mo is uh, uh, gusto mong i-share sa amin 
before we uh, let you go. All right. So uh, thank you for having me, no, uh, Billy, and uh, thank you to uh, everyone who uh, participated to uh, this uh, brief, ano, uh, webinar natin. Um, so um, just to give a you know an overview, uh, Ring Central kasi is a cloud communication solutions company. So what we do. We, we offer yung mga cloud platforms. We we offer it to our clients in the US, UK, Canada, but well, global. So we are really in need of a lot of um, VOIP uh, engineers, Yo. telco engineers. And then um, um, recently, may kakaroon kami na expansion eh, dito sa India. So we're looking for a project manager that can help us in uh, spearhead, spearheading the the project, yung build out project natin sa India. So if you guys know someone who has an experience uh, infrastructure project management, uh, feel free to refer them to Billy para ma, ma route niya sa akin. Kasi um, we will we will be more than happy to have this. Uh, you know this crowd to be part of our um, our company because Ring Central is um, you know, a very diverse company, and we can. One thing that I can really uh, you know uh, assure to those um, engineers that will join us is that um, if you're looking for growth, definitely uh, Ring Central can offer you that. But of course, um, we're looking for. Uh, hungry uh you know uh engineers so sila yung mga tipo na hindi nagsasettle sa less they always look for more that's why uh, uh i must say yun yung key recipe ni ring central no na nagpo-progress kami despite the pandemic crisis that we have kasi a lot of companies you know they were uh heavily uh, uh yes. affected by the pandemic but uh, somehow uh, Ring Central is thriving because uh, we have this hunger for uh, for excellence and then the passion that we give to our uh, employees eh, nandu doon talaga. So hopefully uh, I can see uh, people here na mag join ng business namin. All right. So um, if you have questions about those openings, so irelay nyo sa akin or probably you can. Uh, chat juniors and then I'm sure sasagutin niya kayo and then siguro uh, I'll chat na lang juniors in the back end later kung ano yung mga uh, specific requirements for those positions para ma-post natin or ma-send natin sa inyo if needed in the near future sure, okay sure. so kung wala na kayong tanong yeah kung wala na kayong tanong and naalala ko pala bro I'm not sure mm -hmm. kung familiar ka with uh, Jam Tano or Jamela Tano which is my colleague before Nag-work din sila sa Ring Central. I'm not sure kung nandyan pa sila ngayon. Pero anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, again, okay, maraming 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 salamat bro. So I owe you this time. I mean, I owe you big time this episode kasi kahit ako, marami ako napulot eh. Okay? Sabi ko nga kanina, I've been into senior positions then in in the IT pero uh, still, I got, I get a lot of nuggets. I, I learned a lot of nuggets from what you shared. So, Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, and hopefully we will be coming to in the future. Okay. Submit your so, applications, yo. Sold na tayo. Right. <laughs> okay, okay. So again, bro, thank you for um, giving us the time. Mm -hmm. um, God bless you and your family. Keep safe. Uh, thank you, you too. guys. And then keep safe to everyone as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye for now.